Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel that Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel of the Grace of God, the Gospel of God, the Power of God unto Salvation. I'm going to tell you right now what the Gospel of the Grace of God is not. It is not Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Notice, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see the process there. The gospel of the kingdom is not about being saved. It's about sin being remitted and the receiving of the Holy Ghost. What about the gospel of the grace of God, though? Does the gospel of the grace of God have repent in it? Does the gospel of the grace of God have baptism in it? Does the gospel of the grace of God remit sins? Does the gospel of the grace of God give you the Holy Ghost? Let's take a look. The gospel of the grace of God is only found in Paul's writings. So if you're never in Paul's writings, if your church never teaches you Pauline doctrine, but mixes it with Israel's doctrine, because you may have heard of the gospel of the grace of God, but then they tell you to come down front, they tell you to make Jesus the Lord of your life, they tell you to ask Jesus into your heart, and they tell you to maybe fill out a sin card and throw it in a coffin, okay? None of that is the gospel of the grace of God. Actually, what all that does is it offends the gospel of the grace of God. It basically shows God that you're not a workman and you're not approved unto him. 2 Timothy 2.15 It shows God that you do not study. It shows God that you are indeed ignorant of what the Bible says. But, I'll tell you right now, you know everything about what your evangelical pastor says though but you have absolutely no idea what your Bible says. And the gospel of the grace of God, Paul makes it very clear in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. So he's declaring to us the gospel, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand. And here's the kicker right here, verse 2 by which also ye are saved. Does Peter say that in Acts 2.38? No, he says to Israel that their sins are remitted. He does not say that they are saved like our Apostle Paul. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. In verse 3, and is it, do you get saved because you repent and get baptized? No, this is how you get saved. For I deliver unto you, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, did Peter ever mention that in Acts 2.38? No. And verse 4, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Did Peter ever mention that in Acts 2.38? No. Why? Because Galatians chapter 2, verse 7 is true in your Bible. Paul's gospel is contrary to Peter's gospel. Paul's gospel is the gospel of the uncircumcision. Peter's gospel is the gospel of the circumcision. Peter is a minister to the circumcision. Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. Paul is a minister to to the uncircumcision. Galatians chapter 2 verse 9. The Great Commission, which by the way is not in your Bible. There's no such thing as the Great Commission. You will not find those words in your Bible, in your King James authorized version. The King James Bible, God's perfectly preserved word. You will not find the words Great Commission. You will not find the words Great Commission in any of your new Westcott and Hort deity denying translation either. So where they came up with that, you'll have to study that out. It's probably some evangelical bonehead. But there are churches that call themselves the Great Commission Church. The Great Commission Baptist Church is right in my area. And that's not even in a Bible. 
But again, neither is rapture, neither is trinity, neither is sovereign, and on and on it goes. People that believe their pastor and not their Bible is what is teaching America today. But our Bible tells us that the so-called Great Commission has changed in Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. Paul and Barnabas went one way, Peter, James, and John went another. Paul and Barnabas went to the uncircumcision, Peter, James, and John went to the circumcision with two different Gospels that are contrary to one another. I know your ears are probably ringing, but you know what? You need to study. You need to shake off your evangelical pastor, scholarship, Ph.D. nonsense and start believing your Bible. So as we go through part 9 of the Lord's Prayer dispensationally considered, now that you're saved, you trust the gospel, the grace of God, not Peter's gospel, the kingdom, okay? And you trust that Christ died, did, Christ did everything necessary for your soul's salvation, you are saved. And you're not trusting your works of righteousness, Titus 3.5. You're not trusting your law works, Galatians 2.16. You are trusting that Christ did everything for you on Calvary's cross. Oh, I'm sorry, you're using an NIV? Calvary's not in it. Oops, I'm sorry, you're using an NIV? Throw that thing out. Or better yet, no, keep it in your library so you can point out the errors to other people. Now that you're, a, hopefully you're a King James Bible believer, because if you're not, you have no final authority. And that's pretty sad too, because that's like 90% of all so-called Christianity today. They have no final authority. You know who their final authority is? Probably Oprah or Obama or Rick Warren or James McDonald or Bill Hybels. That's their final authority. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ. Or Creeflo Dollar, like when I was talking to my <clears throat> old buddy of mine about a month ago. He said Creeflo Dollar had a great sermon. Creeflo Dollar he doesn't even have a Bible in his hand. How can he have a great sermon? So as we talk today about part 9, do not lead us into temptation. Without even reading this chapter yet, I'm going to start with what Paul says about temptation, and let's see if R.C. mentions it in this chapter. 1 Corinthians 10.13 There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Again, that is Pauline truth according to the revelation of the mystery. That's not under the law. That's not under the covenant. That's for today in the dispensation of the grace of God in the time of the but now. Okay, Paul gives us his meaning of temptation, okay? That, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. So we have a way to escape today in the dispensation of the grace of God, okay? That ye may be able to bear it. But R.C. begins in this chapter by saying, and I quote, by teaching his followers to ask, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I do not know what translation R.C. is using. He never tells us. I do know he is not using a Bible. This is how the Bible says the verse is. Matthew 6, 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. R.C.'s translation says evil one. The Bible says evil do you see that there is an agenda? R.C., you know what? Before I was a Bible believer, before I was mid-Acts, before I was dispensational, before I was Pauline, before I understood the gospel of the grace of God with clarity, that it was contrary from the gospel of the kingdom, I did not know that there was an agenda that is of the devil. And I can guarantee you that R.C. doesn't even know. I didn't know. You will not 
believe your Bible from someone who does not believe it. You will not be a Bible believer from a Bible corrector like R.C. Sproul. Or by somebody who uses the critical text and not a Bible. I mean, where's the rest of the verse? The rest of the verse says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. R.C. doesn't even mention that. Then R.C. says, Jesus showed that we are to ask the Father to spare us from the temptations and the spiritual attacks that can lead us into new sin. New sin. Aren't we born into sin? Psalm 51 gives us definition of that. But we're going to have new sin. Hmm. That's some nice allegory. Where does Jesus say that? I don't see it in the verse. I gave you what Paul says to do when tempted. He gives us a way out, right? That's clear. Also, was Jesus talking to us? Because he's always referring to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as for us. Which is clearly, when you understand your Bible, and you understand what dispensation we are, and you understand when the death of the testator takes place, which is at the cross... When Jesus Christ dies on the cross, that's the death, that's when the death of the testator happens. And anything before that is Old Testament on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17. So if you think Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Old Testament under the law, and Jesus on, in John chapter 1, verses 9, 10, and 11 clearly says that he came for his own. And in Romans 15, Paul gives us definition of Jesus, Christ, of Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, that he's a minister to the circumcision to confirm the promises of the fathers. Then why would anybody in their right mind think that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, before the cross, is for anyone today? The Bible makes it clear that it's not for anyone today. Again, do you believe your Bible, or do you believe people who don't believe their Bible? The choice is yours. So was Jesus talking to us, the church, the body of Christ? Was Jesus a minister to the circumcision? Did not Jesus come for his own? Did not Jesus only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? That is what my Bible says, and R.C. does not. Is God true or R.C.? Romans 15.8 Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. John 1.10 He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Verse 11 He came unto his own and his own received him not. He came unto his own. He was a minister to the circumcision. Matthew 15, 23, But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. And verse 24, But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Romans 3, verse 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Then R.C. says, and I quote, The force of the language does not have to do with God's enticing us to sin. So God's going to entice us. Why would you even mention that if you're a Bible believer? To say that God would entice us to sin? Then R.C. corrects his translation. Again, I don't know what he's using. He never tells you. Okay, A better wording might be, might be, hmm, that's a sound Bible believer, right? Might be. R.C. is not even sure. Do not lead us into the place of testing. Jesus is saying, he's going to tell us what Jesus is saying. The God of all creation, he's going to tell us. R.C. is God's authoritative spokesman right here. Did you notice? Jesus is really saying that we should pray that the Father will never cause us to undergo a severe test of faith or of our obedience. This is what Jesus taught Paul to teach the church, the body of Christ. 
1 Corinthians 10.13 There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. That doesn't sound like a severe test of faith or of our obedience, does it? R.C., again, is mixing works with grace, Romans 11.6. And if by grace, then it is of no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. 1 Corinthians 14.37 If any man think himself to be a prophet or a spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write... Again, this is our Apostle Paul writing to us today in the dispensation of grace according to the revelation of the mystery. That the things he writes, Paul writes, are the commandments of the Lord. So the things that Paul writes today are the commandments of the Lord. Not anything in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not anything from Genesis to the cross. Not anything from Hebrews to Revelation. What's going on today, the commandments of the Lord, is Paul's writings. Romans 16, verse 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses. Because of their behavior? No. Because of their good looks? No. Because of their money that they give? Or because of all the money that they have? No. You're to mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. R.C. is clearly contrary to Pauline truth. If you have not seen that through nine parts, then you need to, you need to study. First of all, make sure you're saved. You trust the death, burial, and resurrection that Christ died for your never-dying soul. And then study the material that I present on this website. Study. You're looking at my new book blog I'm going to equip you with the books that sound that a sound teacher equipped me you have to have these books in your library but most of all you have to believe your Bible otherwise all these other books are going to be useless the Bible comes first remember that but look at my blog every week there will be something new about a book and important information will be included in it to point out what's not being taught today, to point out the books that aren't being sold in the Christian bookstore. Some of these books you probably will have never seen before. Romans 16, 17. So they cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. So we have to avoid them. And verse 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, right? R.C. said that a better wording might be, so good words and fair speeches, what does that do to people? It deceives the hearts of the simple. So this complete ignorance, because when you look at 1 John and the test Satan gives Israel, if you're not dispensational, you're not going to see this. If you're not Pauline, you're not going to see this. If you don't believe your Bible, you're not going to see this. If you don't rightly divide, you're not going to see this. 1 John is about the test Satan gives Israel. Okay, 1 John 1, 6 and 1, 8 and 1, 10. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And 1 John 2, 4, 9, 15, 22. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. He that saith, he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in the darkness even until now. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And 1 John 3, 4, 3, 6, 3, 22, 23, and 24. 
Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. So whosoever sinneth hath not seen him. We haven't seen him. We believe by faith. We know we're not under the law. We're under grace. If we were under the law, we would be condemned. And whosoever we ask, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. But because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Did he give us the commandments, the church, the body of Christ? No, he only gave Israel the commandments. The law and the covenant is the Ten Commandments. Exodus 34, 28 gives you definition of that. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that abideth in us, but the spirit which he hath given us. And we know, we don't follow the Ten Commandments today. I just read you 1 Corinthians 14, 37. Paul's writings are the commandments of the Lord today. If you are not dispensational, you can clearly see that the Bible will be your worst enemy. The Bible will have you doing the Great Commission, thinking God is sovereign. And that, well, that's if you don't even have a Bible. Believing in the Trinity, the Rapture. Believing that praying the sinner's prayer will get you saved. None of that is Bible. None of that comes from Bible believers. How are you doing with this test, this list, RC? I mean, how are you doing? This is, this is the test that God's giving us today when we are complete in Christ. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, when we have peace with God, Romans 5, 1, when we're seated in heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 6. When all our trespasses are forgiven, Colossians 2.13, we are sealed until the day of redemption. We are saved from the wrath to come. I mean, the verses go on and on. The Pauline truth, the right doctrine, according to the revelation of the mystery, is contrary to Israel's doctrine. We would fail this test if this was for us today. you got to keep all his commandments. There's over 600 of them. You can't hate your brother. You have to see Christ. How do you do that? If you say you're doing it, you're just a liar. All I can say is thank God it's for Israel, not for us today in the dispensation of grace. Are you keeping commandments? Are you sinning? Are you transgressing the law? I know what Paul says about all this in the dispensation of grace according to the revelation of the mystery, which R.C. never mentions in this Kindle book. He never mentions the revelation of the mystery. He never mentions that you're complete in Christ. He never mentions you're a new creature. He never mentions that your old man has been crucified, Galatians 2.20. And you are to walk in newness of life. Because he's in the red letters. He thinks you're a New Testament Christian is what he thinks. And you are under the God of Calvin. Not the God of the Bible. When you are under R.C.'s teaching. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Oops, so much for 1 John. And we know in Galatians chapter 2, verse 9 that John's a minister to the circumcision. So again... That would exclude the church, the body of Christ. We don't have a circumcision nor an uncircumcision. We have an operation of God made without hands. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Oops. Titus 3 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing 
of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that of not of yourselves. All of Israel's program is contingent of themselves. Paul says it's not of yourselves. So how about praying that sinner's prayer? Isn't that of yourself? How about making Jesus the Lord of your life? Isn't that of yourself? How about asking Jesus in your heart? Isn't that of yourselves? How about Romans 10, 9 and 10? You have to conf or, uh, yeah, you have to confess your sin. Isn't that of yourself? How about 1 John 1, 9? You have to confess your sin. Isn't that of yourself? That's because Romans 10 is all about Israel, and that's because 1 John is all about Israel. It's not about the church, the body of Christ. What does Galatians chapter 2, verse 7 say? It's contrary to one another. Those two programs will be together one day in the dispensation of the fullness of times, Ephesians 1, 10. That has not happened yet. Okay, There is a future in your Bible. If you have a new translation, there's no future. It's all present tense. If you have an NASB, it's all present tense. If you have an NIV, it's all present tense. The future tense words are not in it. R.C. says, and I quote, Oh, Galatians 2.21. Ephesians 2.9 and Galatians 2.21. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Oh, you know how many baptisms we had last week? You know how much tithes and offerings we took in? Those are the boasters. You need to mark them and avoid them. In Galatians 2.21, why do you mark them and avoid them? Galatians 2.21 puts Galatians 2.16 and Titus 3.5 in one verse. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. These teachers make... Christ's death in vain. And Paul warns us about the vain, believing the gospel in vain, in the gospel of the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Vain deceit. R.C. says, and I quote, God, however, sometimes deems it best for his children to go through testing. For this reason, see this is what happens when you say 1 John is for us today. For this reason, we see examples in the scripture of God delivering someone, he doesn't know who, someone, to be tested, to go through trials in order to purify that person's faith and to refine his or her righteousness. Well, we made it very clear who that testing was for. 1 John is for Israel. They have to endure to the end. Satan's going to put them through various tests. Hopefully they do not take the mark of the beast, because if they do, they will not inherit the kingdom, and they will not be saved. Us, we're saved by trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection. We have a present possession today. Israel does not. And by the way, there is no Israel today. Romans 11, 11, they're fallen. Would this not be God teaching us through circumstances, though, if you follow our C? This is clearly not bi biblical for us today in the dispensation of the grace of God. Tells us, God tells us very clear what we have to do to walk worthy and what to do when we are tested. Our C does not know. 2 Timothy 2.15, what are we to do? We are to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, Okay, I'm not ashamed to teach and preach what I'm teaching you today because it's right. Colossians 1, 9, and 10 is how you get the worthy walk. Okay, it's not according to anything that you see. It's according to the doctrine in your inner man. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire. And notice what they pray about. It's not about you going to college. It's not about your Aunt Sally being healed. It's not about your mother getting saved. Okay, notice what their prayer is about. It's not about getting a better job. It's not about finding a different church. Okay? It's not about healing your, your broken hangnail. Okay? It's not about healing the pimple on the end of your nose. Okay? 
this is what they pray about and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom pray that they would be filled in the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so knowledge wisdom and spiritual understanding is what they pray for tell me if you're an evangelical listening to this how many prayer requests do you hear about being filled with knowledge wisdom and spiritual understanding how many prayer requests do you get that they're just thankful for Christ saving their soul for Christ seating them in heavenly places for Christ making them complete for Christ making them a new creature for Christ making them complete for Christ giving them all spiritual blessings not physical how many prayer requests do you get that says that I'll tell you how many I used to get scores and scores of them in the mail every week when I was at harvest and I did not get one prayer request on what I just talked about from hundreds of people every week because they've been taught wrong that's why 1 Corinthians 10 13 there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it then RC attacks the Bible the King James Bible in location 799 of the Kindle edition I use the Kindle edition because I got this book for free I would never ever pay for this nonsense and we are going to stop right there and we are going to continue with the Lord's Prayer dispensationally considered do not lead us into temptation on part 10 thanks again for listening don't forget to subscribe to my channel you can check out my new website at preaching the gospel that saves .com for the new mp3s and the book blog and also some other new items on it and you can also go back to my other website for the videos and my YouTube stations are available from both sites at buttnowministry.wix.com slash buttnowministry thanks again and don't forget to subscribe to my channel